Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the basic structures of businesses. And that is sometimes referred to as the different forms of organization. So forms of, of organization here means how the business is organized. There are three major forms of business organization. The first is the most basic and is called a sole proprietorship. And a sole proprietorship is a very informal form of business organization. Any individual, anybody can be a sole proprietorship. If I get up in the morning um, and walk out the door and my, and my neighbor comes by and say, hey, can you watch my dog for me? Or can you walk my dog for me today? And I say, yes, sure. Um, and my neighbor pay me $10. I am a sole proprietorship. I just make $10 in income and I have a dog walking business. Um, there is no uh, filing of any kind. Any income that you generate is considered um, your regular income. And you also take full responsibility for liability that is associated with the business. So the simple dog walking business that I just mentioned, uh, if unfortunately that dog happens to bite someone, then you will become personally liable. So it's the most simple form of creating a business, but at the same time, um, it has a lot of, of disadvantages that go along with it. So before I introduce us into additional forms of business organization, I want to uh, help you uh, create a framework to help you evaluate which way to organize the business is better for you. So in this is actually a general framework that I want to encourage you to use whenever you're making business decision. So the framework is that you want to articulate your criteria and then you evaluate different alternatives using those same criteria. And then you decide which, based on those criteria, which alternative is the one that makes most sense to your business. So in here, I'll, I'll put down a few criteria that may make sense in choosing the different forms of business organization. So one I mentioned is how easy it is to create a uh, sole proprietorship. So how easy it is can be a criteria. So it can be easy, difficult, complicated, lots of paperwork. Uh, another criteria that you may think of is, oh, what about liability? If the dog beats someone, I could become liable. And that is important. So you may want to put down liability as another criteria. And then I mentioned when you generate income, you have to pay tax on those income. So tax could be another criteria. Uh, also, Let's say I get up in the morning and I really don't feel like working today and my neighbor comes to me and say, oh, are you interested in walking my dog today? I can just say, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not available today. So I have a lot of control over my life. Uh, I may have to forego the income, but I don't have to work. So that could be important. So control over not just your work, but the direction of the business. Uh, so in a more, um, practical sense if you if you are the sole owner of a business you have absolute control over all aspects of the business so I just lay out four criteria and then we can look at each of these uh, different forms of business business organization and see how well they stack up according to each criteria so this is just a way that we'll go about evaluating any business decision so, so for the sole proprietorship, we said is very easy. So I'll put down easy and I might put some check mark there to indicate that is really, really easy. Uh, liability, that is a big, big negative because you have no protection for liability. Tax, we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, it's a little bit complicated and we'll talk more about tax uh, in the next chapter as well. Uh, for a sole proprietorship, you pay everything as income tax. So that can be good or bad. I'll talk about that once we introduce the other forms. And control, it has a big, big plus because you are the only one in charge. You can do whatever you want with the business. Now, there are other forms of business organization. Uh, let's say your company become bigger and you pick on a partner. 
There are two forms of partnership. One is called general partnership and one is called limited partnership. Limited partnerships are very special and is designed mostly for tax purposes. So we are not going to cover that a whole lot in this class. Um, general partnership is, say, I want to have a dog walking business and I don't have time to walk all the dogs. So I team up with a friend and say, let's do this together. And we form a partnership. So a partnership is when a business has two or more partners. Um, it's still rel relatively easy to form a, a partnership. Uh, the truth is that the more work you put into thinking out how you want the, the a partnership to operate, the happier you are in the long run. So even though it is easy, I put a question mark there, uh, because the, the a good partnership does require uh, quite a bit of thinking upfront. However, um, there's, there are very few reporting criteria on, and requirements for a partnership, so it's still relatively easy. Liability for a general partnership, all the partners retain unlimited liability. So in fact, uh, this can go even a little bit trickier. So let's say you and your friend form a dog walking business and the dog that your friend was walking on that on a particular day beat someone. You as part of the partnership are liable. So it's not just when you are walking the dogs that you are liable. If you're in a partnership, anything that your partner does also uh, so, um, opens you up to liability. Uh, income tax, uh, in terms of tax, all partnership income is also considered your alternate income tax. So again, we'll talk about good and bad. Um, control, again, I put a question mark there. The more people you are, the decision process becomes a little bit trickier. If you work, so this goes back to the original thing that we talked about. If you have a very clear um, understanding with your partner, that makes the control a little bit easier because when you have disagreement, you know exactly how to handle those disagreements. Um, so you don't have as much control because now whatever you do, you have to check in with your partner. But that can also be good because your partner also provides input for you. Um, the most common form in terms of business for the in the United States are corporations. Um, the all, almost all large businesses are formed as C corp, C corporations. Uh, this, the biggest advantage of C corporation is that it has unlimited liability. Uh, it is not easy to form, and it has a lot of reporting criteria. So that's the downside of a corporation. Uh, there are two kinds of, ta of taxation, and a lot of times um, the one of the biggest disadvantage of a corporation is double taxation. So you gain the liability, limited liability, but you lose in tax. Um, control, again, this varies depending on the size of the business. So the larger the size of the business, the less control any single owner has over the direction of the firm. There are two other types of um, organization. One is called an S Corp. This is a special type of corporation that the IRS allow uh, individuals to create. It provides limited liability, but also allow at the same time that a business be taxed as ordinary income. Uh, the only requirement for S, co S corporation is that there are a limited number of ho uh, shareholders. So you cannot have a multi um, hundred thousand shareholder businesses and form it as an S corp. So you, you it's limited. Um, in terms of how easy it is to form an S corp, is somewhere between a partnership and a corporation. So you still have a little bit of requirement, but definitely not as much as a C corporation. Um, in terms of control, it also is similar to a partnership. Again, it still depends on the size, but it's not as absolute as in the case of a sole proprietorship, but it's more similar to having partners. So when we think of each forms of organization, we want to look at the advantages and disadvantages along this criteria. And more recently, there is a very popular form of um, business organization is called limited liability company. 
and mo and you may have seen this in some business uh, title is abbreviated as LLC. LLC is similar to a partnership, uh, but it has, as the name imply, limited liability. So an LLC is very similar to a partnership. It has is relatively easy to form. It has limited liability. All its income is taxed as income uh, as reg all, all its income is taxed as regular income for tax purposes, and the control again is similar to a partnership. Uh, how many people are in the partnership and what kind of understanding and working relationships they have with each other. So particularly for those of you who might be interested in starting your own business, it's important to know the various ways that you can organize a business. For the purpose of this class, we'll focus on the C corporation form, so regular corporate form of organizing a business. And that is because the majority of the business by revenue, by number of employees in America are mostly regular corporations. So in the context of a regular corporation, what is the goal of the financial manager? So think about that. You may want to pause this video and think about it and take out a piece of paper and write down your answer. Do you think that maximizing profit should be the goal of financial manager? So pause your video and write down what you think. Okay, welcome back. So did you write down is a good is a good is a good goal for financial manager because that's what we're in business for. Well, that is very true. However, if you think one level deeper, you may ask, are we trying to maximize today's profit or are we trying to maximize profit in the long run? And then you may want to say, well, we know that in business we have to take risk to get return, but is the risk worth what we are what we are getting at? So I want to propose a slightly more general goal, and that is to maximize the market value of the owner. So what that means is it translates into generate uh, maximizing the the stock price of the firm. So now I want you to pause the video again and think about, is this a good goal? Is this sufficient for our purposes? Welcome back. And the answer is not necessary, right? Because there are a lot of assumptions that we need to make in order for this to be a valid goal. One of those assumptions is that markets are efficient and that is a question of debate and we're going to look into that throughout in, later on in this course we're going to examine are stock markets efficient um, and then we also want to take a look at one of the things we talk about is control uh, remember even if maximizing stock price is the right goal how do we ensure that a manager will 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 make that their primary goal. Um, so there are a lot of questions that we want to address and whether or not maximizing stock price is indeed the correct goal for the financial manager. One of the things that we talk about is the whether or not managers will work in stockholders' best interest. And the term that we use for that is agency problem. Um, an agency problem ex uh, exists because in a large corporation, managers are typically not the shareholders. They, they may own shares, but they don't own the entire company. So how do we ensure that managers will work in, in um, the shareholders' best interests? So first, we want to talk about the agency relationship. Uh, in a sole proprietorship, there's no problem. The owner is the manager. Once you become a large corporation, then what is best for the manager may not be the best for all the owners. And sometimes what is best for one group of owners may not be the best for another group of owners. So you have this conflicting agency relationship. Whenever you have a conflict, sometimes that will translate into cost. So the cost has two, uh, can be expressed in two ways. One is that managers 
not working in the best interest. So one example would be underinvestment. So a company may invest in, um, may choose not to invest in the project because it's too much work. Um, so that will be shirking by the manager or they may take excessive risk. So those are actions or inactions by the manager that are costly to shareholders. Um, another way that uh, agency cost um, involve, uh, may be incurred is the cost to monitor. So these are the monitoring costs. The cost to monitor managers to make sure that they are working in stockholders' best interests. So monitoring costs can include cost of hiring an audit firm, a cost of um, using certifications, and so forth. And then lastly is to fight for the control of the firm. What direction do you want the firm to 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 go? Um, and managers and shareholders sometimes sometimes may not agree. Um, and when agency problem goes out of control, it can lead to uh, not just severe breakdown within the company, the company can go bankrupt, but it can also lead to um, disruption to the financial market. Um, an example of that happened back in 2000. Um, I know it's a long time ago, but back then there were a lot of financial scandals. And as a result of those scandals, Congress actually passed a new law called the Sabang Oxley Act. Um, is often referred to as Sabox in the financial industry. And this was in answer to agency problem. So what the Sabine Oxley at, um, does is that it, it, it provided um, additional reporting requirement for large corporations. It also required um, managers to personally sign financial statements so that if something does go wrong, they'll become personally liable um, and can face criminal charges if there are financial wrongdoings by the company. So this is to make the management personally um, responsible.